We looked at a couple of command line options to the TypeScript compiler, but when you're working on a large application, you don't want to be typing in the command line arguments every time. TypeScript compiler has an option of specifying a configuration file, which contains all those arguments, and then you just run the compiler without any arguments. It just refers to that configuration file and gets all the information it needs, all right? So the way to do this is by creating a configuration file called tsconfig.com. JSON, right? It's a JSON file that you place at the root of your project, and uh, you can specify what configuration you need in that JSON file. And rather than type in TSC and then a whole lot of configuration over here, you just type TSC and hit enter. And the TypeScript compiler is going to look at that JSON file and get all the information it needs to run, right? In order to create the JSON file, you can of course create it as just a simple text file. You can create it and call it tsconfig.json. That's the name that the TypeScript compiler is gonna be looking at. But TypeScript compiler also has an option of creating that JSON file for you using the init flag. So you're basically running the TypeScript compiler with dash dash init. For this, you're not compiling anything, but you're asking the compiler to generate a sample tsconfig.json file. If I hit enter, it's gonna create this tsconfig.json file, which you can see is over here. This is a JSON file, uh, nothing special about this, but what this does is it has a bunch of configuration that comes out of the box. It has, for example, this line, target has been set to ES5, module has been set to common JS, strict has been set to true. So these are some default compiler arguments that the TSC init sets for you, all right? So now that you have this, rather than specify the command line arguments yourself, you just need to run TSC and hit enter, that's it. This is gonna look at this tsconfig.json and get all the arguments from here, right? So if you notice, if I do TSC, it is going to generate the test.js file, just like it used to before, but uh, we don't have to give the name of the file, right? It's basically looking at all the TS files in this folder, and it's gonna generate the corresponding .js files. Here's an interesting thing though. If you notice here, there are a couple of error messages that has been rendered. If I were to, ren if I were to run the command like we did before, test.ts, the compilation happens, but no error messages are shown. But if I run tsc, there are gonna be a couple of error messages. This is because of one of the default configuration options that is available in tsconfig.json. You see here, there is this thing called strict colon true. This is a command line argument, which as you can see here, enables all strict type checking options. One of the things that it does by being strict, the compiler is being strict here, and uh, what it's saying is, hey, I noticed there are a couple of member variables which have an any type implicitly, that means you haven't really specified a type for it. Here you see there is last name and first name are two member variables which don't have a type specified. And like we know from uh, our previous videos, when TypeScript does not see a type, it assumes any type and anything goes, right? That's not a good thing to do in a real world application. So the default check that the TypeScript compiler does based on this tsconfig.json is, strictly enforce that, strictly enforce typing for all member variables. So what I can do is, let me get rid of this JS file here. And uh, what I can do here is I can type these out. I'm gonna say this is a string and this is also a string. So I'm strictly enforcing typing. I have these two types declared. And now if I run TSC, it's gonna be happy. Uh, no error is printed out and the uh, .js file is created like we expected, All right? The tsconfig.json, as you can see, has a whole lot of commented lines. You see, there are a bunch of lines that are commented out. These are things that you can configure. It's kind of created like a template. And if any of these strike your fancy or you find useful, all you have to do is kind of uncomment that out and uh, configure it the way you want. All right, so let's take a couple of these uh, here. So you see here, there's this thing called out dir, right? So this is the output directory where the TypeScript compiler is gonna generate the output. Now it's at dot slash, which means that all the JS files that are created are gonna be at the same folder as 
the files, uh, the TS files. So let's say you want to create a separate folder called out. And this is where you want all your JavaScript files to go. So what you can do is just provide that configuration over here. Save this tsconfig.json. I'm going to delete this .js file so that it does not get in the way here. And now if I were to run TSC, it is going to generate the compiled JavaScript file in this out folder. You see this? It's over here. That's because we've configured it in tsconfig.json. There are a bunch more options here that I really like, which involve kind of enforcing certain checks and making sure you don't make certain mistakes, right? Making things a little bit stricter when it comes to compilation. For example, strict null checks. It makes sure that you're checking for null. Uh, you also have checks like no unused locals. If you have a local variable that you're not using, it's gonna report an error. Unused parameters. If you have a function which has a parameter that you're not using, it's gonna report an error. So things like these, which makes the compilation a little bit stricter, can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, but it kind of enforces you follow certain convention and it makes your code less likely to have bugs. We looked at all these things which enforce strictness and uh, report errors when th something goes wrong. But here's the thing about TypeScript compilers that we've already looked at. The compiler is gonna compile. And even if it reports an error, it is gonna generate the JavaScript file, which is really weird, but that's how it's been designed, right? No matter what errors it finds, it's gonna render the .js file. Let's say you don't want that. You want the compiler to stop and not render the .js file. You use this flag called no emit on errors. You see, there is this thing called no emit, uh, which has been commented out. If I uncomment this, TypeScript is not gonna generate the output file at all. You see here, the out folder is empty. This is just gonna report the errors and not generate the JavaScript file. But that's not what we want. We want it to generate the JavaScript file, but we don't want it to generate the file only if there are errors. So there is this property called no emit. Yes, it's uh, with the capital O. Now, if I set this flag to true, it says no emit on error, set to true, which means if there is an error, the JavaScript file will not be generated. All right, so I'm gonna go here to test.ts, and let's say I put in a number here which is gonna be a type error, right? It's supposed to be a string, but I'm passing in a number. So if I were to do TSC now, it's gonna report an error and the file is not rendered. If I were to make this back to a string and compile it again, now the compilation succeeds and the .js file is generated. This is very handy. You wanna make sure that you don't uh, proceed with the compilation if there is an error. You want it to stop immediately. So this helps in that case. And again, as with the compiler uh, options, I highly recommend you check these all out. There is, these overlap obviously, because all these are options to the compiler, but this is, I feel, a better way to look at all these configuration and learn about it because there are really handy uh, descriptions for each of these uh, compilation options. And then you can change these and run the compiler and play around with it, which I find a better way to learn what these options do.